Welcome to our cardiac module and welcome to lesson one of it. This is going to be our circulation and our anatomy. You're gonna find this on pages 68 to 71 in your nurse workbook 2.0. The purpose of this video is to go beyond that nurse workbook, but also provide you with real world nursing education as well. And this cardiac module is going to get advanced. So if you stick with me from this first lesson and build on it with me all the way to advanced, you're going to understand more about cardiac than a lot of people that are working in healthcare today. We're gonna to get so basic. You don't need to be in school to understand any of this stuff. That is the entire purpose of these videos for you guys. And the fundamentals that we learn on the anatomy and then that circulation are going to help us understand these advanced hemodynamics that are going to be coming up in future lessons. So let's jump into our basic anatomy before we start our circulation. Whenever we're looking at a heart on piece of paper right here and we want to learn about the structure, well, this is actually going to be our right side and this is going to be our left side. The reason for that is because they make the pictures as if you are looking down at the patient while the patient is on the gurney. So this is going to help us because what we're learning about looking down at paper is the same thing we're seeing when we look down at our patient laying there. So we're going to think of our heart as having an upper half and a lower half. And there are two chambers up here on this upper half. So since this is our right side, this is gonna be the right atrium. And since this is our left side, this is gonna be the left atrium. Down here, we have these cute little triangles. And since it's the right side, it's gonna be our right ventricle. And down here, this triangle, since it's the left side, is gonna be the left ventricle. You're going to hear me say atria and atrium probably pretty interchangeably. And really that's because the right atrium is saying one, one atrium, it is singular. But if we say atria, that's actually plural. So that means we're talking about the right and the left atria. Okay, but then we have all these things that are sticking out of our heart. Well, remember blood has to come to the heart and blood has to go outside of the heart. So blood that is going away from the heart, A away is going to be our arteries. Blood going to the heart is going to be our veins. So our veins are bringing blood to the heart. And using this cardiac heart rate here, we're actually going to learn all about circulation and how it comes in and out of the heart and around the body and all these things that are outside of it as well. So we're going to start off by defining circulation. And what is circulation? Well, circulation is the movement of blood through the heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries in a continuous loop. It moves oxygen and nutrients to where the body needs them and carries waste products away. Okay, we just heard that there's nutrients and there's oxygen, and now we need to understand how this is also a part of circulation. So we're going to start as if our blood doesn't have any oxygen, but it does have carbon dioxide to it. So blood is traveling from our veins to our heart in order to start this circulation activity. So number one, blood from the top half of the body enters the heart through a large vein known as the superior vena cava. So this superior vena cava is right here. And if we can see, this is blue. So this is where unoxygenated blood is coming in. Number two, blood from our lower half of the body enters the heart through a large vein known as the inferior vena cava. And so this right here is our inferior vena cava. And again, this is blue because we don't have any oxygen in that blood yet. Number three, blood entering from the vena cava's empty oxygen pour blood into the right atrium of the heart. So both of these are going to empty straight into here, our right atrium. Number four, once the right atrium contracts, the blood moves through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. So our tricuspid valve is going to be right here, these two yellow sections, and this valve is going to open and close. It's going to allow blood to come out of this right atrium and dump down into this right ventricle. Number five, and when the right ventricle fills up, 
the tricuspid valve shuts to prevent backflow into the atria when the ventricle contracts. So we're gonna see this right ventricle fills up and that tricuspid valve closes. Number six, once the right ventricle contracts, the blood leaves the heart and heads into the lungs through the pulmonary valve or pulmonic valve and the pulmonary artery. So we see here, it ejects out of the right ventricle through this pulmonary valve and it's going to come into this pulmonary artery and actually get ejected out into our lungs. Number seven, while in the lungs, blood travels single file through the capillaries where it drops off CO2 and picks up oxygen. And this is where it gets interesting. So we have our alveoli up here. This is our non-oxygenated red blood cells that just came from our heart. And they're going to actually line up single file and they're gonna drop off this CO2. And that CO2 is actually what we're gonna expel out of our lungs when we breathe. But when we inhale, we're inhaling fresh oxygen back into our lungs. And this is how our red blood cells are going to pick up this oxygen and they're going to bring it right back to the heart so the heart can pump it back out to the rest of the body. Number eight, with the new oxygen, the blood travels through the pulmonary vein and into the left atrium. So our new oxygenated blood comes to these veins right here, and it's going to come in to the left atrium. We're going to see that everything is red because we've now oxygenated our red blood cells. Number nine, once the atria contracts, the blood passes through the mitral valve and into the left ventricle. So we can see our mitral valve right here in these yellow sections, and then this blood is going to come into the left ventricle. And once the left ventricle fills up, the mitral valve is going to shut to prevent backflow into the atria when the left ventricle contracts. So we see this filling here in the left ventricle, that mitral valve will shut. And number 11, when the left ventricle contracts, that blood is going to leave the heart through the aortic valve and into the aorta. And this little yellow section here is going to be a our aortic valve. And then this will get ejected out to this aorta. And number 12, when blood then leaves the aorta and into the arteries to deliver oxygen rich blood around the body providing circulation. This is where we'll see our blood leave. We also want to remember that these are the three main aortic branches, but we also see this little guy down here, and this is our descending aorta. So this aorta is actually coming behind our heart and coming down to feed the rest of the body. So you could think of this as if this was behind the heart right here. Now that we understand circulation, what exactly is hemodynamics? And this is going to look at the why and the how of the movement of circulation. It studies the force and pressures that guide blood flow, such as our blood pressure, our resistance, and our cardiac functionality. And there's so many things that are going to affect our hemodynamics, but with this basic understanding of our heart, the anatomy, and the circulation, of that blood coming into the heart unoxygenated, leaving to the lungs, picking up the oxygen, coming back to the heart, getting ejected out to the rest of the body is truly what makes us work every second of every day. And this concludes our lesson for circulation and anatomy, and I will see you in the next one.